Welcome back, guys. As a heads up, before we move on to our next session, you will need a yoga mat, an A4 size sheet of paper, a pencil, and a marker pen. And in our next session, we have Benjamin, who is a personal trainer and a functional exercise specialist. Ben has coached thousands of runners to improve their technique, working with a broad range of people, starting all the way from beginners all the way up to athletes. In this session, Ben will be talking us through some simple exercises to explore, reconnect, and put life back into our feet. The floor is all yours, Ben. Hi, Ben. I think you're on mute. On mute. Ah, now I can hear you. Hello. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. Always the joy of, uh, you know, technical, uh, technical yeah. jam. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Really looking forward to your session. Yes, it is, it is super warm in, um, in London today. Obviously, it's a lot hotter elsewhere around the world, but you have to excuse me, I've got a bit of a, bit of a sweat on. Um, <laughs> righty, so let's have a little bit of an introduction, shall we? Um, my name is Benjamin Levacant. I have been working with people to improve their foot health and movement skill, let's say, for about 10 years now. I uh, joined the Vivo Barefoot Shoe Company in 2007. I was excited to work with a company that was very environmentally aware. At the time, they were making recycled shoes and shoes out of um, Indian quilts that were unique. And we also had some interesting shoes that were called Vivo Barefoot, and anecdotally, I had had a bad back for many, many years, and when I started to wear this footwear, um, a lot of my back pain went away, and then I was very fortunate to meet a world expert in biomechanics and movement who'd been using barefoot running and barefoot movement to rehabilitate people from injuries. Mr. Lee Saxby, and I was lucky to learn from him for a year or two, and ever since have been sharing the love of, you know, reconnecting and exploring with our feet and relearning the skills of natural movement and embracing our movements, as it were, with the goal of regenerating our body and becoming healthier, fitter, better, happier humans. Um, so this is what we're all about. Okay, let's start with, by, by drawing our feet, please. One of the interesting things is, you know, what is a foot? What is a foot shaped like? And what's a foot's purpose? So if you can grab a piece of paper, please. I'm gonna do it right here. Good idea to stand up and do this because you might find that your foot is um, different when you're standing. So let's have a go. I'm just going to pop this down here, stand on my foot. So you can please join in with this. I can, I'm actually, I can see questions. So if anyone has questions, please uh, let me know. I have just been for a, a walk in my local woods. So 
in my in my sandals, so my feet are slightly dirty. But anyway, here we go. Let's just draw around your foot, please. So we're gonna draw around the toes. Doesn't have to be particularly uh, uh, Picasso like. We're just gonna get a rough outline on our feet. Okay, so there we go. Oh, you're gonna be able to see that again. Not a maybe I use a pen. Not see it there. Here we go. I'm gonna do it on there. Let's do that again, and then you'll see it a little bit better. Okay, here we go. Let's just draw around our feet. Don't really need to go in between those toes. Let's go around there and then up. Okie dokie. Now you'll be able to see it a little bit better. It's just a rough outline of a foot. But what you might notice is my big toe and where it's positioned. And my feet weren't always like that after years of wearing normal shoes and you know I used to work in the city in London and have to wear dress shoes and you know, collected uh, trainers let's say which were not as wide as Vivo's so when I started wearing a Vivo shoe my feet didn't look like this and if you get, I don't know if you have one of these handy, um, but if you get the insole from one of your shoes and place it over that drawing of your foot yeah and line it up with the outside of your foot and then maybe with a different colored pen have a go at drawing around that so here all with the reason the purpose of this is to say you know what shape are feet and what should the shape of a foot be and of course we're all different they're going to be differences in our arch height in the width of our feet in the length of our feet all of those things um but only a little bit and actually when we look at populations that spend a lot of time barefoot what we find is that generally they have wider toes um, and stiffer arches, let's say, rather than a higher or a lower, they have functional arches. So as you can see, if, uh, if you um, continue to wear shoes that have a narrower toe box than your foot would like to be, then what happens is eventually, and I'm going to now put your foot back on there and try and fit it into that insole that you just drew and what you find is you have to squish your toes together in order to fit it in the shoe and because of everything that's going on in the world right now the lockdown you know it's reminding a number of us of what it was like when you're at school and you spend a lot of your i'm going to draw around my foot again now it's squished inside the shoe you know in summertime we would obviously spend a lot of time barefoot and then at the end of the summer when you go back to put your school shoes on of course it's only a couple of months so your feet might have grown a little bit but what they've really done is they've just expanded back out so you can see if i continually wear a shoe that is going to squish my toes together then you end up, amazingly, with slightly more squished toes. And so that is the, uh, the point of having a little go with that exercise, okay? And just to, this is a Vivo insole. So no, I'm not gonna pick on the branding of the other insole there. I'm just going to put a Vivo insole lined up with the outside of this other insole. And they are a similar size, if anything, the one, the narrower one here is actually um, a larger size. But as you can see, this area here is just giving you that space to allow your big toe to be 
in a better position. And why would we want, uh, it's called an abducted big toe, when your big toe is moving away from the midline of your foot, it's called abduction. Um, but why would we want that? Why is that a desirable thing? Well, of course, having a wider base of support gives you better balance and better stability. And one of the muscles that pulls our big toe out away from the other toes is called the abductor hallucis. So it's going alongside the, the inside of our foot. Yeah. Now, if we constantly are in, in shoes that are pushing the big toe in, what happens with that muscle is that muscle becomes atrophied and, and won't function as well. Now, when it doesn't function as well, it also influences the function of the arch of the foot. So, narrow toe boxes in shoes narrow our toes and they weaken the uh, function, weaken the strength of our big toes and our feet, which ultimately can lead to, you know, um, poorer movement skill, worse balance and Whilst it's tricky to get this across to younger people, of course, we normally don't think about these things until later. Falls cost, in the UK, falls cost something like 3.7 million a day, 1.7 billion a year. So we have studies that we've done with Liverpool University that show that wearing a wide, thin, flexible shoe improves the postural stability of middle-aged and, and old people like me. Um, and also they can perform a timed up and go test quicker, yeah? So also we've done studies with younger people, students, which showed that when they wore the Vivo shoes for six months, they ended up with 60% stronger toe flexor muscles. So why and how do people make a change in life? People generally only make changes because they're inspired or desperate, yeah? So you can either wait until you have foot problems later on and then try and find solutions for them, or we can be inspired now to connect with our feet and think about the nutrition that we give our feet, which is what we put on them, um, and, and consider maybe that it's a good idea to wear shoes which are uh, wide and thin and flexible and allow the foot to actually function. Okay, so <laughs> further myths. Generally, places where people go barefoot, they don't have any of the foot problems that we do. So plantar fasciitis, you know, Morton's neuromas, Achilles tendonitis, none of these things really exist because people have strong mobile feet. And of course, puncture wounds can be an issue. Um, but other than that, people generally don't, and bunions and things like that, don't really have a place. So if our feet are weaker, one of the best things that we can do is spend more time barefoot. Um, and because of the current lockdown situations in many places, we are spending more barefoot, uh, uh, more time barefoot at home. Um, you may find that by spending more time barefoot, your feet have spread a little bit. And it's again one of those big questions that I often ask people. They get in, you know, do you wear your shoes in or do the shoes wear your feet in? There have been classic studies and research done since the, the late 18th century, um, but certainly lots in the 19th century and early 20th century where they looked at the influence of shoes. And, you know, this is a, an ongoing discussion. I'm sure it's much older than that since, since the dawn of time when we first wrapped some skins around our feet. I'm sure the conversation was around not tying them too tight so that, uh, you know, we could run efficiently and, and skillfully. Um, so there we go. Now, what do we do if we want to rehab our feet? Well, we're going to get into that over the sessions, over the next couple of days. But today, it's about exploring. So we've drawn around our feet. The next thing that you can do, if your foot, when you draw it around it, if your big toe was in towards the other toes, then we can just do a little big toe 
abduction test. Can you just grab your big toe and pull it out further to the side? You know, there's an additional test that you can do with your big toe where you can put a ruler, a straight line, turn that over, you'll see it better, a straight line along the inside of your foot and the big toe is ideally in line with that. And people are going to say, what about genetics? What about this, that, and other? Of course, there are slight variations in this. There's going to be a little bit um, of difference from person to person, but the biggest influence that you're going to have on the shape of your feet is kind of the, the, um, the nutrition that you give it, the space that you give it day to day. Um, you know, that's going to have the influence. Okay, so practicing the first steps to mobilizing your feet is to pull this big toe out, yeah? And as I said, we're gonna get more into exercises tomorrow, but pulling the big toe out and then also seeing how much range you have here. Can you pick your big toe up to about 60 degrees? We want between 60 and 90 degrees. And this is very, very important to skillful walking. And again, probably most of us at this age, hopefully at your age, hopefully have, have got a decent range. But if you've started to get any kind of stiffness or pain or um, pain in the middle of the balls or stiffness in the ball of your big toe or arch pain or heel pain or Achilles pain, I just really want to assure you that it is not natural let's say it's normal in society today almost all of us 95 percent of us are born with perfect feet something like 77 percent of americans have experienced foot pain by their middle age um it's not normal it's, it's normal it's not natural yeah okay so can we pick our big toe up and pull it all the way up and check your other foot as well it's very important to be symmetrical of course uh, if you have less range on one big toe compared to the other, then what you will find is that you will walk with an asymmetric gait, as in a slight limp on one side, potentially. So important to practice these exercises. Yep. Okay. And we've just got a few minutes left today. So the next one I'd like everyone to do is to do a standing on one leg test. I'm, uh, I'm on uh, <laughs> landscape view as it were here, so it's a bit tricky. If I stand up, you're not gonna see my head, but let's do it anyway. Here we go. Okay, so I want you to practice just standing. We're gonna stand on one foot and have a go at can you stand on one foot for 30 seconds. Really, we can do a minute. The goal would be, can you stand on one foot for 30 seconds to a minute, absolute minimum. And when doing this, I find it useful to have foot pointed straight forward. So we're not pointing too far out to the side. When we do that, we find you have to put a lot of your body weight over to the outside of your foot in order to balance. When the foot is pointing straight forward and your big toe is functioning, and we'll talk more about that again tomorrow, then it's much, much easier, <laughs> he says pulling over, to balance on one leg. Yeah, and of course, you can make these, the simple little exercises of balancing on one leg more challenging by popping a yoga mat foot or a towel, something underneath your foot. And then can we stand on that on one foot for 30 seconds to a minute? Yeah, so I'm going to come back down and chat, but please do carry on practicing standing 
on one foot. So the goal of today was to just bust a few myths. People who don't wear shoes generally don't have foot problems. Just imagine if when you went to the dentist, the dentist said, yep, we've had teeth for two million years of our evolution, but I'm afraid they're not meant for chewing. Every time that you eat dinner, I need you to wear a gum shield. And think about the effect that wearing a gum shield, cushioning your teeth would have on your jaw and your face um, and potentially your gut because you wouldn't be chewing properly. And it's the same with feet. Feet need as much interaction with the ground as possible in order to give you the information to move skillfully and to function naturally. There we go. Okay. I'm uh, going to, there, yeah, there we go. Hello. Hello, Ben. Thank you so much. That was very informative. Good, good. We're layering, layering in the information, so I'm trying to keep it just sort of a simple welcome today, and then we'll get into some more uh, mobilization and toe exercises and embracing our feet uh, tomorrow. Yes, we'll be seeing a bit more of you, won't we? Um, as you guide us through embracing and evolving the relationship that we have with our feet. Um, now Do we have any we... questions or are you keen to get cracking? Um, let's see if we have any questions. What's his name? Benjamin Levacon. I think people have been too busy participating in your sessions. No perfect. questions yet. That's, that's, that's perfect. That's, that's, <laughs> that's rich. As long as I'm delighted people hopefully drew around their feet and uh, thought that was interesting and compare it to an insult, you know. Um, um, <laughs> but we'll be seeing more of you tomorrow. And, yeah, and I'm sure we'll be getting more people tuning in. Excellent. Oh, okay. 